Are you fascinated by the paranormal and want to hear about encounters that have happened to real life people in real life places? Do you need a drink to calm those nerves after hearing some scary stories? You're listening to Booze and Bourbon. Well, we invite you to grab a drink, whether it's a coffee or something with a little bit more spirit in it. Grab a blanket, snuggle in, because I'm Kim and that's Jen, and we're Booze and Bourbon. Welcome back, everyone, for another episode of your favorite Booze and Bourbon. This is Jen. And I am Kim. <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Hi. More than ever right now, I want to give you a hug. This isolation sucks, but it sucks on so many other levels now. Yes. Um, I definitely feel like a lot of people out there want to hug all of their friends and all of their loved ones a lot more than any other day. We've definitely had a very upsetting would be a light way of putting it for the last, you know, couple days here. So exactly. So if anybody doesn't know, you should just Google Nova Scotia and see what comes up. We had the uh, worst massacre in Canadian history happen over the weekend. And just talking about it makes me want to cry. I have a lump in my throat. Yes, me as well, uh, because the uh, I guess we shouldn't really discuss it, but just the ongoing investigation just gets worse and worse as the days go on. So and we are a very small province. Um, we don't have a whole lot of people here. And so many of our communities are very tight knit. So I think as the death toll goes up, all of us will have some sort of association or have sixth degree of like knowing somebody. So um, it's really, really sad. And uh We decided to continue on with doing this podcast and not necessarily talk about that situation because I think we all kind of need a bit of a break. And uh, this is a nice little escape and a nice little break. So um, if any of our listeners have any friends or family that were affected by this terrible situation, our thoughts are with you. And we also want to give you a very large virtual hug. Yeah, huge. Yeah. So I'll tell you how I came across this. And it was kind of funny because I thought, you know, maybe it'd be a really good time to do like a haunted Nevada. And, uh, you know, because it seems like a fun spot and Reno seems like it's super haunted and there's a lot of gold towns gold rush towns, I should say, or ghost towns in the area. So I started to try to like look up certain areas that were haunted And then I started to get into like the whole gold rush thing. And then I started to get into Lake Tahoe. And this guy that we're going to talk about today is like the OG Tiger King. So that resonated with me. Yes. And it just seems like this is one crazy wild story that we need to talk about. And uh, it. Like it took me a while to get to this point, but I'm so glad we got to this point because we're we're gonna talk about boats. We're gonna talk about mansions. We're gonna talk about Lake Tahoe. We're gonna talk about multiple mistresses, wives. We're gonna talk about famous people, and we're gonna talk about exotic pets. Right up our alley. And ghosts, of course. So uh we're in for a wild ride, guys. It's gonna be a really fun episode to do. Um, but before we go any further. We also have something exciting to drink, which is Knob Creek Rye. I have never had it before. And when I saw it in the little liquor store in Chester, Nova Scotia, I was super pumped. I wish I could share the enjoyment. I uh, <laughs> no, I don't someday. have it there today with me, but <laughs> I'm there in spirit drinking it with you. <laughs> someday, girl, someday we'll be together again. Um, But for now, I'll tell you about it. So it's a small batch. It is 100 proof. And on the nose, we've got a rich caramel, a bright ginger, and lingering menthol hints with more herbaceous touches developing with the robust rye notes. So it also has a lot of oak spice. And I'm going to take a sip. So cheers in the air to you, Jen. I have a little uh, Eagle Rare. That's what I'm having again today. 
Nicely done. Good. You've got a nice little bourbon collection going on over there. Thank you. But these days, with the constant uh, drinking, that I hate to say that I'm doing, but it's really getting sparse. So. I know. Yeah. It happens. It happens. Um, so there's definitely a lot of rye spiciness to it. But it's not like super overpowering either. There's some vanilla and some brown sugar and some buttery notes in there. Um, I feel like it finishes medium-ish. There's still some lingering going on on my tongue right now as we speak, but more towards the back of my tongue. It's peppery and Mm -hmm. it's delicious. So for the price, I think Canadian, it's around $40. It's a steal of a deal. Yes. Yes. So, Jen, um, how's your Eagle Rare over there, by the way? Uh, it is just as tasty, yeah. if not even more, than the last time. Okay. I feel like it's one of those ones, the longer it sits sometimes, like it, I don't know, just always gets better. Yeah, I honestly think that your bottle just needed to air out a little bit. Yes, agreed. Just like my armpits. <laughs> I almost made you spit it out. I was in mid drink. I'm like, wait, just like your armpits, eh? <laughs> yeah, spicy. It needs some airing out. Yeah. Due to some technical difficulties, we are foregoing the would you rather question. So stay tuned because right after this break, we're going to hear all about the Thunderbird Lodge. And welcome back. So we're going to talk about the Thunderbird Lodge as well as a man named George Wattell and what a man he was. Jen, do you care to tell us about the man? He was, of course, a man by the name of George Wattell Jr., who was born in San Francisco on September 28th, 1881. Born into great wealth, Wittell barreled through life at full throttle collecting exotic animals, elegant automobiles and boats, beautiful women, and continuous lawsuits at more than 20 miles of Lake Tahoe's Nevada shoreline along the way. He was one of the more notorious playboys of California and Nevada, indulging in a succession of marriages and liaisons that fueled the region's gossip mills. A recluse in his later years, Wattel shunned publicity and in doing so inspired speculation about his every move. By the time of his death in 1969, he had become the stuff of legend. Early in his life, after attending high school in Knob Hill, San Francisco, George initially refused the college education his parents felt was so important. He left home instead to join the Barnum and Bailey Circus without his parents' approval. While there, George used the rather substantial allowance provided by his wealthy family to stage a series of trips to Africa to capture wild animals for the circus. It was during these experiences with the circus and and in Africa that George developed a lifelong passion for wild animals, particularly the big cats. In 1922, George's father died, leaving the 40-year-old man an inheritance worth roughly $30 million the equivalent of well over $400 million in today's dollars. He managed his investments wisely, growing his fortune throughout the Roaring Twenties. Perhaps his shrewdest move, however, was to liquidate about $50 million in stock holdings in early 1929, thereby insulating himself from, and some say helping precipitate, the crash of the stock market in October of that year. Following the economic collapse, George was one of the wealthiest men in California. Then in 1929, George's ex-wife Josie gave him a lion cub, who he named Bill. The lion became George's closest friend and companion, traveling with the millionaire everywhere he went, including nightclubs and eventually the Thunderbird Lodge, a place we're going to get into in just a minute. George had heard of some property at Lake Tahoe being offered for sale by the Carson and Tahoe Lumber and Fluming Company and other landholders who had not fared well in the stock market crash. Eventually, he acquired over 40,000 acres of land on the Nevada side of the lake, including more than 25 miles of the shoreline. 
Though he originally planned several large developments at Lake Tahoe, including casinos at Sand Harbor and Zephyr Cove, his first priority was a summer retreat for himself. Construction of that lakefront estate, the Thunderbird Lodge, began in 1936 and was completed in 1939, along with his fabulous yacht, the Thunderbird, commissioned by George specifically to get him to and from the lodge. At this time in his life, however, George was growing somewhat reclusive, and after spending summers at Lake Tahoe, he began to value his privacy more and more. The estate included a 600-foot-long tunnel just to permit George to move from the boathouse to the main residence without being seen. What I did find out here is that the entrance in the house to the 600-foot-long tunnel was actually in the laundry room, and he would blast a siren every time he was going in just to let his caretakers know that he was in the tunnel. He abandoned plans for the commercial developments, withdrew from the Tahoe community, and was rarely seen, preferring the seclusion of his miles of undeveloped shoreline. Ilya, with whom his marriage had evolved into one of convenience, considered the Thunderbird Lodge far too rustic for her tastes. In his 60s, Wattel's fondness for animals increased and his toleration of people waned. From his private zoo at Woodside, he brought his favorite four-legged friends to Tahoe for the summer, including Mingo, the elephant, my favorite. He did maintain a small group of associates who joined him at the Thunderbird Lodge for high-stakes card games and all-night drinking parties, but otherwise remained elusive, much preferring the companionship of his animals. The card house, built especially for his poker games, hosted the likes of baseball legend Ty Cobb and fellow recluse Howard Hughes. In his 70s, Wattel suffered a broken leg when one of his lions fell on him and refused surgery to repair the severely fractured bone. As a result, he spent the last decade of his life confined to a wheelchair and the elderly tycoon preferred long hours at the Thunderbird Lodge simply gazing out at the lake or in the company of more than 40 birds and the aviary constructed on the front porch of the residence. Following his death on April 18, 1969, at the age of 87, George Wattel left quite a legacy, particularly in public lands at Lake Tahoe and bequests to animal rights organizations. His remains were interred at the family crypt at Cypress Lawn Memorial Park in California. The Thunderbird Coma, Lodge California. is one of the last and Flamboyant best examples the end, of a great residential estate on Lake Tahoe from the period in, in which prominent San Francisco coach. society built homes on the lake. In addition to the main house, there is a card house, caretaker's cottage, the cook butler's house, an elephant barn, the admiral's house, the boat house, an adjoining 600 foot tunnel gatehouse and one particular place that isn't spoken about often and that's the opium den oh hello the thunderbird lodge is an example of an approach to architectural design that is intended damn to be george in you're with some hard setting. shit visitors who have toured this property refer to it as the lake tahoe version of the winchester mystery house the thunderbird yacht as well has quite a storied past at least before it made its way back to the Thunderbird Lodge. No deaths aboard or accidents, but it was purchased by casino mogul Billy Hara from Hara's Casino. Then after his death in 1978, a new owner, Owen Owens, died less than a year later after he purchased it. He didn't have it for long due to his fate, but then in 1981, Buzz and Joan Gibb purchased the yacht. They often hosted guests on the yacht, and some of those more famous guests included Tony Bennett and President Ford. What's really cool, Jen, is I've also heard um, through like YouTube research and internet research that uh, it has been reported that the ghosts of Marilyn Monroe and Frank Sinatra are at this place. What? See, now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Hung out at the Thunderbird Lodge. And I know I didn't give you a whole lot of time to like really hash out this like whole Thunderbird thing. But mm-hmm. please right now do me a favor yes. and Google this place. Okay. Google Thunderbird Lodge Lake Tahoe and you will instantly fall in love with it. It is so gorgeous. Oh, I see it. I see it. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? There's a lot of pictures. This is so pretty. 
I know. We got to go. We do. We do, definitely. All right. So in 1998, Del Webb Corporation, which is ironic because my parents live in a Del Webb community in Florida. Um, a de- they're a developer of over 50 active lifestyle communities, probably littered with STDs, purchased the Wattel estate in, and 140 acres of the land for $56 million. Then, with a few different decisions made upon the land, a nonprofit Thunderbird Lodge Preservation Society was formed. They then affiliated with the University of Nevada in Reno, and the Thunderbird Lodge buildings were conveyed to the Preservation Society along with a $9.8 million note payable to Del Webb. Then, in 2000, the George Wattel Estate was added to the National Register of Historic Places. So today you can visit the estate and take one of the many tours. They've got like wine and cheese tours. They do boat tours. You can arrive by land or you can arrive by boat and you can get married there. So yeah, maybe, you know, in your future, decide to get married, you can get married there. And yes, I will come. Perfect. You would have to. (laughs) You don't have a choice. (laughs) There are not only tons of guests who visit there all the time, there are also multiple ghosts that call this place home. So where did all these ghosts come from, you ask? Well, when the famous Thunderbird custom boat was built, it turned out to be a 55-foot mahogany and stainless steel yacht, and it would no longer fit in the boathouse that George had originally built. So he decided that he needed to convert it to an indoor pool house and build a bigger boathouse. So a tragedy actually occurred during the construction when one of his workers in the pool house fell from the ladder, dying instantly. George was very irked and very superstitious, so he was upset by this, and he immediately halted the project and sealed up the room entirely, leaving everything exactly as it was. The pool house is said to be visited by the ghost of this workman. Tour goers have claimed to have been captivated by apparitions and ghostly whispers in the pool house, even alleging the dripping water in the area sounds like voices. Mm. And what I read, too, was that it wasn't until more recently that this room was actually opened up Mm -hmm. and the current um, preservation society has left everything exactly the way it was so there was a ladder like at the very bottom of the pool and they left the ladder there and apparently that's exactly what it looked like right after the workman had broken his neck and died wow yeah lodge historian and curator bill watson has spent many nights at the remote property but has yet to have a paranormal experience he recalls in an interview i've been here on every dark and stormy night imaginable And there was only once when I thought I heard footsteps up on the balcony, Watson says. He doesn't discount what others have felt at Thunderbird, though, and there are several deaths that have been associated at the estate. We have volunteers who won't go into the tunnels at night, and a few have said that they've sensed a presence, Watson says. Later admitting, given enough late nights and tequila in this lodge, anything can happen. (laughs) A few people have insisted that they see a ghost of Jimmy Lee a chef in 1954 who was apparently mauled by a black bear while taking scraps to the incinerator. And a few psychics have told Watson that they've seen George Wittell standing right next to him while on site on the property. There's also the worker who, who fatally fell in the old boathouse as crews were building a swimming pool in 1940. No one has been able to verify his name, according to reports, but a few psychics and ghost hunters have had some notions. People also report seeing the spirit of Wattel's beloved confidant, maybe secretary, and mistress, May Mulhagen, around the Tahoe, Biltmore, and Thunderbird Lodge. Mulhagen was tragically killed decades ago in a car crash in Crystal Bay, driving one of Wattel's vehicles. It also has to be mentioned that there is a strong spiritual background already in the area because of the Native American heritage and folklore as well. Lake Tahoe's east shore holds a lot of myth legend and mystery that's still being discovered today and when we're talking about this myth and legend we're talking about cannibalism oh yeah well that changes everything (laughs) and something else that i discovered is that um 
I didn't get any like actual numbers when I was doing my research because I didn't really want to dive too far into it. Mm -hmm. But it seems as though since Lake Tahoe is a very deep glacial lake, Mm -hmm. um, it's always very cold. And so um, I think it's average temperature is like 39 degrees, which they say is like perfect temperature for like preserving bodies. Oh, great so there's a very good possibility that um, given the historic nature and perhaps cannibalism that there are many mm-hmm. bodies at the bottom of the lake. Great. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so up on the mountainside adjacent to Thunderbird, there are unmarked grave sites as well from pioneers. And they can be found along with some of the remnants of Mulhagen's car. So regarding this accident, it seems that George was seriously attached to the incident. He reportedly had the wrecked Jeep brought back to the Thunderbird Lodge so that he could look at it, perhaps even study it. And the rumor was that he walked to the Jeep every single day and talked with the ghost of May. In order to keep the somber mood, he had ordered his caretakers to play dark funeral music over and over so that he could allow her to hear his honor. That's just a tad creepy there, buddy. Um, so then it was in 1972 when Jack Dreyfus bought the estate, and the first thing he said upon his r- arrival was then caretaker Odd Hodney dead in the kitchen in front of the sink. So, of course, his first order of business was to call the coroner. So Hodney was a pretty famous guy in Tahoe. He was an underground Norwegian resistance fighter in World War II, and he would actually ski in the back country dressed all in white, sniping German physicists on their way to work with his white rifle. So he came to Lake Tahoe to teach athletes how to ski and to shoot for the 1960 Winter Olympics biathlon and started looking after Wattel's estate. He sounds like a scary ghost because he's got a badass reputation. Yeah. The whole uh, white outfit, white uh, rifle, that's quite something. Way to match it up. (laughs) Matchy, matchy. After reading parts of the Haunted Lake Tahoe book written by Janice Auberding, I think that's how we say that, Mm. she mentions that she believes it is truly haunted by May and George both. During an EVP session that she did at the lodge, it sounded like a couple bickering back and forth. She also mentions that one day she was at the lodge with a friend. They went upstairs and split up so that Janice could photograph George's bedroom. Her friend felt compelled to make her way across the landing to George's wife's room. Her friend came rushing back, exclaiming that there was a woman crying in the bedroom. Apparently, her friend asked the ghost if she could help her, but was unconsolable. Janice knew that her and her friend were the only two on the property during that time. Some people who have stayed at the resort have written about it on TripAdvisor. One review said this, We stayed there about three months ago for one night. It was quiet, clean, and comfortable. Although I was scared out of my pants, my husband laid down most of the time due to not feeling well. I heard noises coming from the bathroom area. We both heard what sounded like moaning noises outside but when we would open the door all noises would stop as soon as he would shut the door the noises would appear back we saw shadows on the wall where there shouldn't be any at all figures were coming from the bathroom area like peeking around the corner i'm 30 years old got so freaked out woke my husband up and made him walk me to the bathroom we would definitely stay there again we love the paranormal the only other hotel that seems as haunted as this one is the slumber inn okay what slumber in? I want to know. I know. Now now we have to look at that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jen, I hope you enjoyed that story because it just intrigues me. I want to learn more about George. I feel like he was a badass kind of guy. I mean, totally. And I mean, someday when I marry my Joe Exotic uh, replica, <laughs> we'll have a, you know, Tiger King style wedding at uh, Lake Tahoe there at the old Thunderbird Lodge and I'm sure it will be a time (laughs) I cannot wait it certainly will be a time as long as there's whiskey Mm -hmm. it'll be perfect 
Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that pretty much wraps up today's episode. We want to thank you so much for listening, especially after our debacle of an episode last week. We just really wanted to spread some love and joy and cheer. And uh, we hope that we did the same for you guys today because we all could use a little escape during this time. Exactly. So, Jen, if people want to find us on social media, I'm sure they probably already know where we are. But just in case they don't, where can they find us? Well, I mean, unless you uh, aren't familiar with Instagram, um, (laughs) we are on Instagram, uh, Booze and Bourbon. We're also on Facebook, Booze and Bourbon, the podcast. Uh, We sometimes may appear on Twitter, but not really. (laughs) And, you know... Any possible uh, app that you can listen to a podcast on, you can find us there and listen to all of our lovely episodes. Perfect. And just in case you're wondering, Jen is not hurting an animal. That is just her dog. No. Just let him in, Jen. I know. He maybe heard about the Tiger King part. Hi, Lucius. Okay. And guys, if you want to send us any stories, if you've been to Lake Tahoe, if you've seen the Thunderbird Lodge, if you've heard of this story before, if you love the Tiger King, if you want to give us some would you rather questions, or if you have a ghost story, please send us an email at boozeandbourbon at gmail.com. That is B-O-O-S-A-N-D bourbon at gmail.com. Dot com. And we just want to give an extra little shout out to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. And today's episode was brought to you by Knob Creek Rye and Eagle Rare Bourbon. Well, until next time, guys, stay safe, stay spooky, stay hydrated with whiskey. We love you and thank you so much for listening to us. Goodbye. Booze and Bourbon is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to advertise on the show, please head over to abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.